Okay, we're live. All right, good evening, everyone. I'll call to order uh, the Borough of Highland Park count regular council meeting for February 15, 2020. Uh, this meeting is called to order in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Annual notice of this meeting was provided to the Home News Tribune, the Star Ledger, and the Highland Park Planet on January 5th of 2022. In addition, notice of this meeting via Zoom was faxed to the Home News Tribune and emailed to the Star Ledger and the Highland Park Planet on February 9th, 2022, and was posted on the borough website at www.hpborough.com and on the bulletin board at Borough Hall, 221 South Fifth Avenue, Highland Park, New Jersey, on February 9th, 2022, and has remained continuously posted as required by law. Filling in for the mayor tonight, I will preside over the council meeting and may interrupt, warn, or terminate a participant's statement or participation in the virtual meeting if the participant's statement does not adhere to the three minutes provided to each participant for public comment, or if the statement is abusive, obscene, or irrelevant. At this time, I'd ask Councilman Hirsch to leave us, leave us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Council President. Yeah, the flag is over here, so you have yours. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the America. United States of America, to the Republic, for, the Republic stands, for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Phil, you're muted. Oh, I was just gonna, I was asking for a roll call, please. <laughs> all right, Mayor Brill Mittler. <laughs> Councilwoman Canavera? Here. Councilwoman Foster? Councilman George? Here. Councilman Hale? Here. Councilmember Hirsch? Here. Councilwoman Kim Chohan? Here. Borough Attor Attorney Schmier? Here. Borough Administrator Hover? Here. Deputy Borough Clerk Santiago? At this time, do any members of council have any questions on the agenda for tonight? Seeing none, I have no honors and awards this evening. <clears throat> that brings us to approval of the minutes. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And that would be as to the minutes as stated in the agenda. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, that moves us to council reports. We'll start um, with council member Canavera. Do you have a report for tonight? I do. February is Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. According to the Domestic Violence Awareness Project, approximately 1.5 million high school students in the United States experience physical abuse from a dating partner. Yet only one quarter of parents talk to their parents about domestic violence. Abuse includes physical, psychological, and sexual abuse. Visit youth.gov and loveisrespect.org for conversation starters and resources. Teen dating violence sets a pattern for continued domestic violence. The Board of Health would like to remind you that February is also American Heart Month. This is a time for us to reevaluate our heart healthy habits. Um, some ways that we can do this is to know your numbers, such as blood pressure and cholesterol levels. Also try to be more active Heart disease can happen at any age, so know your children's numbers too. Also a reminder that smoking and vaping affect your heart health and the heart health of those around you. And also please remember to wear your masks at all time when in public. The Housing Authority would like to remind residents impacted by COVID-19 
to check the New Jersey event, eviction prevention information to see if you <clears throat> are protected from eviction. You can check on www.covid19.newjersey.gov slash slash pages slash renter. Human Re Relations Commission is meeting tomorrow at seven. The Zoom link is on the borough website if you'd like to pre-register. The Community Food Pantry is open the second and fourth Thursday from 9 a.m. to 10.45 p.m. and 6 p.m. to seven. And also the Saturday following Thursday from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. every month. Donations can be made using their Amazon wish list. Highland Park Gives a Hoot Food Pantry is every Tuesday at the Zone 6 Teen Center from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. Donations can be made by mailing a check to the borough hall with a memo in it that says Highland Park Gives a Hoot. Between these two programs, we are serving over 300 families. The Mental Health Commission wants to remind everyone <clears throat> with a mental health crisis to please reach out for help. Middlesex County crisis hotlines are Rutgers Behavioral Health, 855-515-5700. Raritan Bay Medical Center hotline, 732-442-3794. Or you can text HOME, H-O-M-E, to 741-741. Thank you, that's the end of my report. Thank you, Ms. Canavera. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Kim Chohan, do you have a report for tonight? Yes, I do. Just wanted to quickly um, mention that tonight on the agenda is the request for proposals for the reevaluation re um, as we move forward this year and prepare for the townwide reval and also level out the playing field here in town. Um, and also, I just want to wish everyone a happy belated Valentine's Day. You all 14, 14,000 plus almost 15,000 residents, you're all loved by us. And that's my report. Uh, thank you, Councilwoman. And thank you for staying on top of the reval. I think that's going to be one of the more pressing and popular issues of the year. And, and uh, you're on top of it every every meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, Councilman Hirsch, do you have a report tonight? Yes, Council President George, uh, thank you. Uh, just a few things. Um, uh, the Department of Rec uh, has a has has a big list of new programming that's out. Rather than go through everything like I did last time, uh, just because it was very exciting and it felt so cold that you know to look forward to spring programming was a was 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 a real plus. Um, go to uh, highlandparkrec.com. That's highlandparkrec.com, and you can see all the spring programming for youth and adults that's available. Uh, the team at Rec, uh, you know, we've been working really hard to get uh, uh, new programming going. Uh, particularly with um, you know limitations on indoor programming as well uh, as the weather permits too uh, it's going to be warmer tomorrow and the next day uh, you know so we'll, we'll see some more of those warm days and hopefully uh, we'll see a lot more outdoor programming as well uh, just a few other things with 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 recreation uh, the um, uh, the uh, department of recs a very popular zimba gold class uh, will begin spring sessions in march um, and uh, we will be adding an additional day each week, but you can now attend Zumba every Wednesday at 9.15 a.m. and every Friday at 11 a.m. Uh, there will be free tax assistance uh, at the community center through April 6th. Um, uh, please call the center for details. Uh, there's free blood pressure screenings that are available on the first and third Friday of each month at the community center from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. On Thursday, March 17th, uh, please join us for um, uh, an afternoon performance of authentic Irish music by local artist Brian Zura. My friend, Brian Zura. Brian, you're not watching, but but hello. Uh, starting at 2 p.m. in the parking lot at the community center. Um, they are really good. So if you are available, uh, it's St. Patrick's Day, so come out, come on out and celebrate. Um, please join us on Tuesday, March 22nd at 11.30 a.m. for a, for a um, collaging art program. Uh, please reach out 
uh, to the community center to register. And again, for a complete list of programming uh, and events, go to www.highlandparkrec.com. Uh, just a couple of other items. The Historical Commission, uh, the Highland Park Historical Commission has received $15,000 in a grant from the Arts Institute of Middlesex County to, to conduct a survey that documents approximately 200 resources running the length of the Lincoln Highway uh, Historic Corridor. Uh, the survey and documentation will be conducted by a historic preservation consultant, uh, and they will also develop a historic context statement and will determine if there's a potential historic district or any sites individually um, eligible for historic designation or recognition. While we don't know, you know whether any of those properties rise, rise to that level, um, the Lincoln Highway is the first transcontinental road for automobiles in the United States, uh, and it's the main thoroughfare for traversing of course, the borough for Highland Park. Unfortunately, they did not think of uh, mid-block crosswalks uh, early on when the Lincoln Highway was first formed. Uh, the road has a long history uh, that can be traced back to its earliest, earliest documented use as a trail by the Lenape Indians. Uh, they will also uh, develop a historical, uh, I mentioned the context statement, sorry. Uh, thank you to Michelle Richobi and the Highland Park Historical Commission and the borough's Cracker Jack administration team of Terry Hover and Emma Von Thun for getting it done. Uh, it, this is, you know, this is a project that um, the Historical Commission, you know, is very active. Um, they are volunteers, uh, and it's a real great example of volunteers working closely with borough staff to achieve their aims. So if you are not volunteering yet, and you care about Highland Park, uh, and you have something in mind that you really want to get done, volunteering on a border commission is a really great way to do it. Uh, the Safe Walking and Cycling Committee, uh, the uh, 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 participated in a virtual public information center on February 3rd to provide residents and businesses with information on the intersection safety improvements uh, being designed for phase one of Highland Park's 2016 Safe Routes to School project. Uh, the project targets intersection safety and access improvements in the neighborhoods surrounding the borough's public schools. Um, the project design and, constru and construction costs are funded by the federal government <coughs> and administered uh, through the New Jersey Department of Transportation. Phase one of the project was awarded in 2016, and phase two was awarded in 2018. Uh, you can watch the presentation at www.hpboro.com and go to the government drop down tab at the top and click on Safe Routes to School. Uh, if you would like to submit questions or comments on the phase one project, and you can see a listing, um, if you go to that page that I just mentioned, uh, you can see a listing of all the uh, crosswalks that are. Um, impacted by the, by this project, uh, please contact Terry Hover, uh, our borough administrator by phone at 732-819-3789 or email her at tjover at hpboro.com or by mail at 221 South Fifth Avenue, Highland Park, New Jersey by Thursday, February 17th. So time, time is limited. So watch watch the presentation. We would love to have your feedback. We had some uh, good attend. We had some great attendees um, uh, uh, tune in and ask some really great questions. And um, you know, this is uh, this is an ongoing project. But anybody familiar with a lot of those crosswalks uh, know that there's a lot of improvement to be made. And this is just a really exciting way to make Highland Park more walkable. And that's my report, Council President. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Hirsch. And oh, thank you. Uh, I know you mentioned the administration and all, but thank you for. Uh, the Arts and Rec Commission and, and your work with the volunteers to land that grant. Uh, it's something unusual, um, professionally done. I think we'll, we'll add a lot to the, just the general quality of our understanding of being here. Thank you. And Councilman Hale, do you have a report to make? I do. <clears throat> um, I just wanted to also um, reiterate what Councilman Hurst said about the Historical Commission. Um, they've been a part of the Neighborhood Pro um, Preservation Project um, on the stakeholder board. And we've, we've got a lot of great information um, that will help shape um, what we do up on Woodbridge Avenue based on um, the history of Woodbridge Avenue. And, and we're looking forward to, to not only this new grant, we're looking forward to working with them in the future um, as we sort of uh, better understand exactly um, the, the history of Highland Park um, and how that can be brought forward today um, uh, as we do uh, work, work towards redevelopment. So it's been really great to work with them and it's a nice sort of synergy um, combination of history and, and moving forward. So I just wanted to say thank you to him and to them um, for, their, for their work on that. The, the, um, our, our, our interim report for the Neighborhood Preservation Program is, 
is, is moving along. Um, there's going to be a lot of really wonderful things that um, we're going to be able to do in the first year, and we'll be able to talk about that more um, in the future. Um, I did want to say that uh, one of the agenda items for tonight is uh, uh, is related to a, is an ordinance related to cannabis, um, and um, I just wanted to sort of very briefly um, kind of give a high level view of what we're attempting to to do tonight. Um, this is not a a, 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 a do over, or not a, a rehash, or or anything like that. This is really just sort of clarifying um, the procedures and processes. Um, by which uh, cannabis businesses are going to be licensed um, in, in Highland Park. Um, the ordinance tonight does really does two things. The first thing um, is it makes a space for medical um, uh, cannabis, um, which is something that, that um, when we originally adopted the ordinance, um, did not have a, a, a space among um, the potential licenses um, for medical um, uh, dispensaries. Uh, the reason for that is that we were waiting on the state um, to see which way the how the state would sort of use that guidance, and it and it turns out that um, they're going to remain separate. But we wanted to make sure that that should someone want to have a medical dispensary um, within uh, Highland Park, that that would be allowed under the ordinance. Um, it doesn't increase the number of potential licenses; it still remains at six. Um, but we did make a space for for one of those to be a medical. Um, facility, um, just uh, as, as a little bit more diversity in the, in the potential um, uh, cannabis retail market. So, um, so that's, that's one of the things. Um, and the other thing is that we've, um, after consulting with, with many folks um, across the state, um, but in particularly folks um, over in, in New Brunswick, um, we've decided that the initial licensing process um, or, or the, the, the ordinance says that the initial licensing process is going to be through an RFP or an RF light, a request for licenses. Um, and what we'll do is, is gather them over a period of time and then um, review them all at once um, uh, rather than what we would normally do at sort of a, a, a more um, a mature business where if someone wants a license, they come and apply for it and then um, whoever's there first gets it. So because this is a new um, process, because this is a, a new class of business that we're going to, to sort of collect um, license applications um, before making a decision on any um, licenses in Highland Park. I wanna point out and make sure everybody understands that um, uh, no licenses in Highland Park um, Will, will be valid um, until uh, the, the potential applicant has uh, a state license. Um, so um, that's, that's sort of a, a fundamental, if, they have a, if they've earned a state license, um, then they can, can move forward with um, having a Highland Park license. Um, so that's really the, 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 the ordinance that's, um, that's there tonight. It's a clarification, it uh, expands to medical marijuana um, without expanding the number of potential sites. Um, and, uh, and, and it really does sort of outline the process by which we'll go about licensing cannabis businesses. So I just wanted to make that clear to everybody. Um, happy to talk about it at any point. Um, and that's my report, Council President. Thank you, Councilman Here, When you talk about space, um, <clears throat> you're talking about within the ordinance itself, uh, allowing for the provision of it. You didn't actually mean a specific location, I would assume. No, no, the, the, that's that's the responsibility of the businesses to find a place oh, um, within our it. zoning and with our, within the ordinance about where they can go. Great, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I just have a, a brief report tonight from Public Works. <clears throat> uh, good evening to everyone as we continue to celebrate Back Black History Month. Uh, we Tonight we're also celebrating the Lantern Festival, which is the last day of the Lunar New Year, and we have a beautiful full moon to do that. In the Department of Public Works, some unseasonably warm weather allowed DPW to start pothole repair a little bit earlier, uh, of course, only as the weather permits. Now, we all know that some of our roads are in very poor condition, uh, but work by PSEG and Middlesex Water are essential, and so we have to cope with the inconvenience until our coordinated efforts to repave the streets can start when the weather breaks. Uh, and all the programs are coordinated. Um, uh, unusually for a program like this, administration and public works, along with public safety, are actually coordinating the work, number one, so that we don't 
uh, run into a situation where we're tearing up roads that are just repaved. We're trying to avoid that. We're using our computerized system to coordinate the work. Um, and hopefully uh, this year, because we have a number of moving parts, uh, they're not always part of a regular program. Uh, so we'll be coordinating, uh, coordinating, coordinating them uh, uh, along with the Middlesex County Woodbridge Avenue Improvement Par Project, PSEG's road repairs, uh, following the replace replacement of our ancient gas lines and the NPP project on Woodbridge Avenue. The benefit is that more roads will end up seeing some repaving and the work will benefit more neighborhoods. DPW will again be conducting bulk trash removal by appointment this year based upon the change in the pickup, which we, if we implemented last year. The phone app appointments will start in March for April pickup dates, uh, which will extend into May as the last year. And we'll shortly have the instructions on scheduling pickups available on borough websites and social media. The Environmental Commission is working, is continuing work on the Greenway, the connection between Johnson's Park and Donaldson Park. The Environmental Commission has information from the 1995 study done on that Greenway. And today we arranged a file share with the borough to hopefully move the grant program, which we received along from a point of departure rather than beginning the project all over again. Um, Sustainable Highland Park has proposed a resolution supporting the statewide effort to amend the state constitution to include a green bill of rights to extend the right to a safe and healthy environment to all of us. The Public Works Committee will be reviewing the resolution for a recommendation for this council's consideration at a future meeting. The Shade Tree Advisory Committee will also be presenting to the Public Works Committee regarding the 2022 tree planting program and some additional ways to, to, to sustain our tree and understory canopy, which are so essential to our environment. Uh, they also um, have information on the survivability rate of the trees that have been planted over the past few years to help to amend and, and tighten our program. Stack has worked very diligently with the administration to improve this year's planting program with more focus on survive, survivability and success in the plantings. Uh, just a reminder, uh, I had a number of questions over the last week or so uh, regarding the Park Partners pre presentations, which we'd ordinarily be doing right about now, gathering to have fun together and admire the vast volunteer talent base here in Highland Park in many areas. Unfortunately, the pandemic has not been kind to this really delightful gathering of all of us. This year in April, the, the borough plans to post and circulate the procedure for an expanded uh, partners presentation in June. So don't give up. There will be a chance to participate in the par partners grant program. Um, I did promise a number of people I would, would bring that up even though it's somewhat down, down the range for consideration. And that is my report. Um, um, oh, sorry, Borough Councilor, Mr. Schmier, do you have a report? The Council President, no report this evening. Thank you, sir. And Borough Administrator Javier, do you have a report for tonight? Uh, the only thing I wanted to mention is that the Borough does have a number of positions open. It doesn't always happen that we have four positions in various departments at one time. And I'd encourage anybody who's been interested in uh, a job in municipal government to go visit our website and review the offerings or share them with anybody you think might be interested um, because I think it's a great place to work. Uh, but that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Hover. Uh, so it, uh, there's no mayor's report tonight. The, the mayor is um, on an excused absence uh, out of town tonight. So that brings us to public participation. This is uh, 20, uh, this is time for the first public discussion session. Total time allotted is 21 minutes. There's three minutes maximum per speaker. Comments are limited to items on the agenda in this session. If you wanna speak on an item that is not listed, you are free to do so, uh, but please do it at the second public comment session, which later in the meeting, which is open for all questions and comments. The borough clerk's representative will monitor the time and indicate when three minutes has elapsed. You'll get a, a warning when there is 30 seconds remaining. There will be a hard stop at the three minute mark to make sure everyone is time to speak. Uh, just as a reminder, I may interrupt, warn or, warn, or terminate a participant's statement, or if it does not adhere to the three minutes provided, or if the statement is abusive, 
obscene or irrelevant. Uh, since this is a Zoom meeting, if you would like to speak, please raise your hand by pressing star nine on your phone keypad or select the raise hand button in the, um, uh, in the uh, applications block for the Zoom appearance. Please press star six to unmute yourself. The borough administrator will announce your turn by reading out your name or the last four digits of your phone number if that's how you're appearing. Please begin by telling us your first and last name as well as your address. Again, if you would like to speak about a topic on the agenda, please press star nine or the raise hand button now. Borough Administrator, would you tell us how many participants are and announce our first speaker? Sure, we have 12 attendees right now and I see three hands raised. First up is Hashim Shomari. Please state your name and address. And you may need to unmute yourself. <coughs> You know, I accidentally hit, uh, I, I was looking to speak, I, I accidentally oh, hit. Uh, no problem, I, I will go to the next person. All right, uh, looks like the next uh, person up has a phone number ending in 4445. Please state your name and address for the record. Hi there, Lois Lubbing, North 2nd Avenue. I wonder if it's possible to have explained uh, number 13, and it's number 13A, the ordinances on first reading about what is the amendment to the automotive service and repair garages. I know it's first reading, but it wasn't on the printout, except for go see the home news. And the other thing, if anyone is interested in still in Black History Month, there's a high school book that was written in 2009 by Philip Hose, H-O-O-S-E, about so many people who were thrown off the bus in uh, Montgomery, Alabama, years before Brave Rosa Parks. But the book is about Claudette Colvin, C-O-L-V-I-N, who was a high school junior who was remarkable and put up, well, one of many people who were thrown off. They sometimes, black people, residents would pay their five cents to the bus driver and, of course, have to exit the bus where they were going because that's the front for the white people go to the back, but as they were walking to the back of the bus, the bus driver would jolly take off and, and be gone, take their money, and not return it. And there are deaths. There are all sorts of problems. And, well, thank goodness Rosa Parks, of course, was part of a group with Martin Luther King um, activists. But it is, I thought, quite fascinating, quite horrible, but what a brave young lady, and she was still around in 2009. This was in the uh, late 40s, early 50s, when, when all these arrests and, and beatings were going on. So, yes, I would like to just see the hear what the uh, automotive repair part is and um, maybe more information toward the appointments at number 16. What um, is this committee rehab and redevelopment screening committee uh, for the planning board? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, could I ask Councilman Hale to briefly address both of those fall in your bucket? I know we've discussed the um, the um, uh, garage display of uh, for sale vehicles in work sessions, but both of them fall under your bucket. Could you give us a brief explanation? Sure, absolutely. Um, so the 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 ordinance about um, repair places is to allow our um, uh, our existing uh, uh, auto repair places to apply for a state license to be able to sell a small number of cars on their lot. Um, uh, the, the, it's limited to a number of, to about four cars. Um, and the, the, the goal is that, that many of our um, uh, auto repair places have, have, have approached us and um, they, they often spend a great deal of time um, rehabbing cars, rebuilding them um, um, and, and, and taking old cars and making them uh, nice, um, and uh, they'd like to be able to sell them on their lot. And so there's a, a state program that allows them to be able to do that. Um, there just needs to be a local ordinance um, that allows it to be, um, it, that, that allows for it. Um, so it's, a, it's an attempt to help um, our existing repair places. 
um, be able to find a little bit extra income in these tough times. And so that's essentially the, the, the ordinance. Um, uh, and then uh, the uh, Rehabilitation and Screening Committee um, is, a, is a, a fairly, I, as long as I've been in, in, in this economic bucket, um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, an informal group um, that uh, will provide um, developers with guidance um, on potential projects. Um, there's no decision making that is 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 um, made there. It's just simply um, an opportunity for um, someone to sort of uh, lay out what potentially they might want to do um, on a on a particular site um, and to get feedback from members of the planning board, the zoning board. Um, I sit on it as well. Um, just to, to give an informal idea to them prior to them to uh, submitting all of their um, full paperwork um, for, uh, for, for a particular project. Um, it's voluntary, it's not required, um, and it, but it has proven quite successful um, to, uh, in, in a number of instances uh, where sort of some, some uh, places that a developer was headed um, uh, were able to move them to a more Highland Park um, direction. So that's the, the rehab screening committee. Um, Rebecca Hand, who's being appointed tonight, is the new chair of the planning board. And of course, she sits on that committee. Thank you, Councilman, for the information. Uh, Borough Administrator, do we have any other hands? We do. I see five hands raised. Uh, we're up to 15 attendees at this point. It looks like someone named Edward is up next. If you could just please state your full name and address for the record. Yes, this is uh, Betty Epstein and Edward Epstein. Um, I'm going to speak first. I'm Betty Epstein, and then my husband's going to speak. Um, I just want to say that we both Excuse signed me your address, the 208 Cedar Avenue. Uh, mm -hmm. We both signed the petition in August that we okay. were against the um, having cannabis in Highland Park. Unfortunately, the council still voted to have it happen. Um, Highland Park is a family town. We can walk everywhere. Uh, we have high property taxes and that's true everywhere in Middlesex County. I don't see why we need, want cannabis stores in Highland Park, but not only saying that, why would we want six? We only have three pharmacies in town. We have a downtown that's maybe five blocks long on Raritan Avenue. We need a store on every block. This is crazy. We just shouldn't have it. Um, I, think, I think it's detrimental to the town. I think it's going to affect our property values. And I think it's dangerous with kids. And I know kids aren't allowed to buy it, but kids always find a way to get things that they want. And I, I think the council should reconsider. And if you can't ban it, you should at least try to limit it and restrict it as much as possible because I, I think it's gonna be detrimental to the town. Thank you, Ms. Epstein. Uh, my name is Ed Epstein. And I want the council to know that I'm opposed to the idea of having cannabis, any kind of business or any kind of usage of cannabis in Highland Park. I have a very interesting educational background as well as professional. I am from the Chicago area. I have a bachelor's of arts in criminal justice, but also a uh, major of um, sociology. And I have a master's of science in psychology of correction. Having said that, for over 20 years, I was an adult probation officer in Chicago, Illinois. Um, years ago, the individual using pot would get six months to five years probation and in certain instances, incarceration. The clients use drugs basically to get high pot, as I said, and escape in many ways from reality. Often marijuana, was a gateway drug based on the idea of having more expensive, extensive drug use and sometimes even death. I can talk about that later if you wish. The effects of marijuana can be detrimental to kids and young adults. The existence of cannabis businesses in Highland Park would lead 
with the need of even more police patrols. And also, in addition to that, it would possibly create a more of an activity on the police in this area, this town. These types of businesses will have a detrimental effect on even our property values. Highland Park is a family-oriented, walkable town. I don't want that to change. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Epstein. <clears throat> Borough Administrator, do we have any more speakers? We do. Uh, next I see is M. Botian. Please state your name and address for the record. Hi, uh, Mary Botian, 709 Madison. I just want to remind uh, each of you that every action that you take to facilitate commercial pot sales in this town, it's not only a disgrace to many of us, as the previous speakers have mentioned, but this is also a violation under the Federal Controlled Substances Act. And if tax proceeds ever do get delivered to Highland Park's financial officer, as soon as that cash is processed, you are all further illegally complicit, even under the IRS code, which references trafficking and controlled substances. Uh, is important, especially as this is a finance resolution tonight. A couple of questions on the documentation that you have for amendments to the, to the pot ordinance. You have failed to include the planning board attorney's recommendation that pot, the pot ordinance should include a thousand feet from a school, as well as quote, all other federal and state regulations. This should be in the Highland Park ordinance. Exhibit A refers to pot items not being stored or housed, quote, at the officer dispatch without trained security personnel guarding the items. It then refers to signage. What office or dispatch location are you referring to? Will any trained security personnel be armed at any location that sells or has commercial pot on the premises? Are any are renderings uh, of pot plants being limited to just delivery services? And if so, this should apply to any aspect of a commercial pot business. In the interest of transparency, the words recreational, THC and psychoactive cannabis should be in the ordinance to make clear to Highland Park residents what you are each referring to every time you have written in, quote, cannabis retailer, as opposed to just saying personal use, adult use or retail. You are being very misleading and unclear. On your licensing applications, there is no mention that pot businesses need to provide their estimated costs to the borough for their proposed operations. That should be in there as well. You want to add the ability of a medical pot shop to also sell THC recreational pot. This is not lost on those of us that saw this was a condition presented to you several years ago by the pot shop that you invited in. Also, you say that these THC sales will not count towards the quote, five retail pot shops, meaning the recreational THC psychoactive pot 30 shop. Seconds. This is an underhanded way of trying to increase the location selling THC pot. Last but least, you wanna remove security fencing and gates. Explain how this would enhance the safety of the public. Thank you so much. All right. I'm administrator, any further hands? I do see some hands and just, just so everybody knows, uh, the 20 month minutes is up at 7.47. Uh, next- Well, uh, Councilman Hale did take the time okay, to well, answer I just, questions to the public. However you wanna handle it, but I just wanted to let you know that. Uh, well, I, I, I think that what, that should add another speaker. He did was kind enough to address- uh, well, We have three question. hands, so we might be able to make it anyway. Okay, uh, <laughs> uh, it looks like Daniel Stern Cardinal is up next. State your name and address. Hi, Dan Stern Cardinal, 221 Harper Street. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. I, so um, I just want to thank you for uh, kind of clarifying and moving forward with the cannabis uh, work in town. I'm really happy to see that that's, you know, we passed it last August. And then um, I'm really happy to see that we're, we're kind of clarifying things and getting the logistics in order so we can actually move forward on, uh, on those businesses once, um, you know, once we get applications and everything. Uh, Council Mahal, I, I was actually going to ask kind of for clarification, so I appreciate the, the explanation earlier in the meeting. Um, so I didn't have to ask, so thank you. Um, and just thank you all for kind of putting in the work to, to get this stuff off the ground and, and moving forward. And um, 
know, kind of following the data uh, rather than the paranoia. Thank you. All right. Are there any further speakers? Through my hands, I do. Uh, it looks like Milagros Aguayo is up next. If you could just state your name and address for the record. Yes, hello. My name is Milagros Aguayo. My yard is one at two South Tank Avenue, Highland Park. Um, yes, me and my family, we don't want businesses, um, all laboratories of marijuana in this small town, especially for the children that we have. This is very small town and there's the three schools very close. I want you to reconsider why you want to still open this. Is you here? A few people that say that it's very a problem this. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right, I do not see any other hands raised at this time, Council President. Uh, thank you, Ms. O'Gara. At this time, then, uh, the clerk will, will announce uh, uh, the ordinances on second reading. We'll move, uh, move to the ordinances. Uh, the first is item 12A. Would you please report on advertising the capital ordinance for improvements to South 4th Avenue, Johnson Street, and Montgomery Street projects for consideration of passage on final reading by title? Capital ordinance providing for improvements to South 4th Avenue, Johnson Street, and Montgomery Street projects in the County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, appropriating $503,505 from the Department of Transportation Municipal Aid Program, therefore to pay the cost thereof, has been duly advertised for consideration of passage on final reading by title and affidavits of publication thereto are on file. The ordinance has also been posted and made available for public inspection as required by law. Thank you, Ms. Van Thun. Is there a motion to take up the ordinance on final reading by title? So moved. Second. Uh, at this time, we'll open the public hearing. Are there any public comments on the ordinance uh, providing for improvements to South 4th, Johnson, and Montgomery Street? Uh, by the way, this is a uh, this is part of the uh, annual street repair program that we have, where we have some money which is matched by DOT funds uh, to do um, road repairs that are in the pipeline for our, our works. Uh, as I said before, there are other projects and other funding and other companies that are gonna be involved in uh, more road repair. So we'll see substantially more. This is our standard road replacement program. Are there any comments from the public? I do see two hands raised. Looks like Mary Forsberg is up first. State your name and address. Hi, actually, um, I don't have a, a question about this. I somehow my hand got lowered in the public uh, question. So um, I will wait until the end of the public period. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Uh, I do see a couple of other hands raised. Uh, again, Edward, coming up as Edward. Uh, that would be the- uh, your name and address for the um, 208 Cedar Avenue. We live around the corner from Johnson. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do there? And are you sure they're done tearing it up? Cause they were just tearing it up last week again. And they were tearing it up in front of my house too, on the corner of Johnson, uh, Ms. Epstein. Uh, yes, they're co they're coordinating with PSE and G, uh, which is part of the reason why the project last fall ran way into the fall past paving time. There is a time that contractors consider as past the prime to to lay asphalt and do the priming work, so that they continued to do a lot of the excavation. Um, and because of that, then because they could do the excavation during the winter months, they proceeded to get a jump start on Johnson as well as uh, portions of, of, of South First. Um, and that work will be completed. Uh, it's part what of the What are they schedule. going to do? You keep saying the work. 
What are they going to they're do? Re, they're re, resurf They're going to repave Johnson. Concrete will be removed and graded, and they're going to repave Johnson Street from, I believe it's from South Adelaide, but it may be from first to South Second. I'm not positive. I have a comment also in regards to this matter. No, you don't live on Johnson. No, I want to talk about our street. That's not part of the issue. Thank you both. There's a second comment period where if you want to weigh in on other roads. Um, looks like uh, phone number ending in 4445 is next. Please state your name and address for the record. Hi, Lois Lebing, North 2nd. So to continue on this um, repair, street repair, is it just paving? Are you repairing sidewalks? Are you adding curb ramps if necessary? The repaving project impro includes improvements to curbs which are damaged. Uh, also, in, in some cases, will will be um, where there are curb cuts for driveways, that curbing would be repaired. It generally does not include sidewalks, but it will usually, uh, if necessary, uh, if wrap around the ADA accessible corners, um, you know, where the ramping and some of the older ones have the red blocks or the red tiles that are in place as well. So it would inc include curbing that is either um, deteriorated or needs to be removed for the paving project and includes the ADA accessible walks at the corners. It does not include sidewalks. Thank you. Uh, looks like Karen Ebel Avery is up next. State your name and address, please. Do you wish to speak on this ordinance? Again, it's Karen Ebel Avery. You have the opportunity to speak on this ordinance. All right, Council President, I don't see that they're uh, muted. So I'm yeah, not sure what's I, I going see on. her microphone shows that she's clear, but it looks yeah. like there's some ability for the speaker to connect. Um, okay. So perhaps uh, we can try a reconnection during the, the uh, public session and give the speaker a chance to be heard. So at this point in time, um, I see none other. Uh, therefore, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. I'll Very second good. that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, <clears throat> and then again, uh, as to um, item 2-22-58, uh, is there a resolution to adopt or reject and advertise the ordinance on final reading for capital Ordinance improvements to South 4th, Johnson, and Montgomery. Motion to adopt. Second. A roll Council, call, please. Councilwoman Canavera? Yes. Councilwoman Foster? Councilman George? Yes. Councilman Hale? Yes. Councilmember Hirsch? Yes, and I just wanted to clarify something when when when, when Ms. Epstein was speaking. I, I, I chuckled at, at one of her comments. Uh, um, not because I thought it was funny, but because we've all been living through uh, what's going, been going on this, on the south side, and it's been it's been a real trial in patience and maneuvering. So, um, uh, absolutely yes, and can't wait for for our roads to be smooth. Councilwoman Kim Chohan, yes. And that ordinance that mo uh, motion carries. Um, the next item is. Um, for ordinance requiring a first reading. Uh, would the clerk uh, please report on the introduction of amendments to chapter 230, automotive service and repair garages for consideration of passage on first reading by title. This was uh, introduced uh, in response to questions in the first public session by Councilman Hurst, uh, I'm sorry, Count Councilman Hale with regard to sa sales of small volumes of motor vehicles. Is there a motion uh, to uh, adopt or uh, reject and advertise the ordinance for first reading by title? Motion to adopt. Second. Second. Oh, third. <laughs> <laughs> Councilwoman Canavera? Yes. Councilwoman Foster? Councilman George? Yes. 
Councilman Hale? Absolutely, yes. Council Member Hirsch? Yes. Councilwoman Kim Chohan? Yes. And the public hearing on that matter will be on the in the first meeting in March. Uh, I'd ask upon the uh, clerk to, to read the introduction of the ordinance to amend chapter 136 of the borough code regulating the establishment, operation, and licensing of cannabis businesses in the borough of Highland, Highland Park, which is a working title subject to final adoption. Is there a motion to adopt or reject and advertise the ordinance on first reading by title? Motion to adopt. Second. Madam Clerk, could we have a roll call on that, please? Councilwoman Canavera? Yes. Councilwoman Foster? Councilman George? Yes. Councilman Hale? Yes. Councilmember Hirsch? Yes. Councilwoman Kim Chohan? Yes. And again, the, the second reading and adoption of that ordinance will be scheduled for the first uh, council meeting in March. That brings us to the consent agenda, the resolutions on the consent agenda items 14A through 14F uh, are considered to be routine matters. Uh, item 14A, uh, item 2-22-61, a resolution authorizing acceptance of a grant for the renovation of the Highland Park Public Library pursuant to the New Jersey Public Library Construction Bond Act. 2-22-62 is a resolution to amend the annual salary ordinance resolution. I believe that is for crossing guards, uh, uh, adding a crossing guard, uh, uh, Madam Administrator. Oh, you're challenging my memory. I <laughs> do not recall on that one, Phil. <laughs> uh, I, I, I believe that it is. Uh, item 14C is 2-22-63, authorizing ex uh, execution of a memorandum of understanding with Middlesex County Office of Emergency Management for utilization of specialized equipment. We uh, have uh, Chief Abrams here who has clarified that is for items of safety such as the elevated watchtower, which we see at the street fair sometimes, uh, movable barriers or emergency generators, uh, which the, the, we do not have in the borough, but which are available um, pursuant to this agreement for um, requests from the county. Um, resolution to uh, 22264 to reject bids received for the purchase of water meters and advanced metering infrastructure and replacement and testing of meters. 2-2265 authorizing a request for proposals for reevaluation of all real property in the borough of Highland Park as um, the Councilwoman uh, Kim Chohan told us earlier. Uh, and 22266 resolution to approve the bills list. <clears throat> uh, is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda as read? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Uh, roll call, please. Councilwoman Canavera? Yes. Councilwoman Foster? Councilman George? Yeah, just a comment on 22261 for the acceptance of the grant for the renovation. Uh, the Highland Park Library did get a second round grant for uh, capital improvements to the building structure in the library. Uh, this is the second part. Uh, the state grant program requires the uh, borough to match the funds that are granted. Uh, this is the other part of the library's acceptance. I vote yes on the consent agenda. Councilman Hale? Yes. Council Member Hirsch? Yes. Councilwoman Kim Chohan? I just want to also comment on resolution 22265. I appreciate the, it was two residents that actually emailed me when they received their new tax assessment card in the mail, um, which were, we were actually all in the same boat. We purchased homes in 2020 and now received the new assessment for the year. Be patient with us. We're doing the reval to level out that playing field. So I do appreciate um, your emails and your comments. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, item 15, resolutions requiring a separate reading. 2-2267, uh, resolution to approve emergency temporary appropriations. Is there a motion to adopt or reject the resolution? Mm -hmm. um, 
<clears throat> I'll second. Do we have a roll call, please? Councilwoman Canavera? Yes. Councilwoman Foster? Councilman George? Uh, yes, this is uh, actually, it, it call, it's called an emergency, but it's actually part of the budget process prior to the budget being adopted. The budget is funded uh, through what they call emergency temporary appropriations pending the passage of the final budget. I vote yes. Councilman Hale? Yes. Council Member Hirsch? Yes. Councilwoman Kim Johan? Yes. And resolution item 15B is uh, resolution 2 2268, resolution will approve temporary uh, or to approve budget transfers. There are a uh, motion to adopt or reject. So moved. Second, is the roll call? Councilwoman Canavera? Yes. Councilwoman Foster? Councilman George? Yes. Councilman Hale? Yes. Councilmember Hirsch? Yes. Councilwoman Kim Chauhan? Yes. That brings us to item 16 on the agenda, appointments. Um, appointment to the Rehabilitation and Redevelopment Screening Committee. Uh, Rebecca Han, the planning board representative, um, as Councilman um, Hale described, uh, the the uh, program. Is there a motion to confirm? I'm sorry. There's also a, a new Highland Park volunteer fire department member, Irene M. Cohen. Is there a motion to confirm those appointments? So moved. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Canavera. Yes, and thank you very much for volunteering. Councilwoman Foster, Councilman George. Uh, thank you to both volunteers, uh, especially to Firefighter Cohen. I appreciate your, your spending the time. It's a tough volunteer position with a lot of training and physical work. I vote yes. Councilman Hale. Thank you to both volunteers and yes. Councilmember Hirsch. Yes. Councilwoman Kim Chohan. Yes. All right, that brings us to our second public participation uh, period. Again, um, it's uh, three minutes per speaker on any item. Just bear with me a second. Um, each item speaker has three minutes, but may comment on any topic. The borough monitor, uh, borough clerk, or the representative will monitor the time and will offer a 30 second warning and then indicate when three minutes has elapsed. The session will wrap up by 9 p.m. If you would like to speak, please raise your hand by pressing star nine on your phone keypad or press the raise hand button in the application bar on your Zoom. Please unmute yourself by pressing star six when, you're at, when asked by the administrator. The borough administrator will announce your turn by reading out your name or the last four, four digits of your phone number if you're appearing by phone. Please begin by telling us your first and last name as well as your address. Again, if you would like to speak about a topic on the agenda, please press star nine or the raise hand button now. Uh, Borough Administrator, do we have any speakers for the second session? Yes, we do. We have 16 attendees and three hands raised at this time. Uh, first up is Mary Forsberg. Please state your name and address for the record. Hi, uh, this is Mary Forsberg, 317 Denison Street. I actually um, wanted to comment in the first um, uh, public session about the garage um, uh, thing and the uh, cannabis thing, in part because I think I, I work for the legislature in the nonpartisan research office for many, many years. And um, for every bill that was introduced in, in Trenton, there was a, a statement at the end of the bill that told you exactly what it did and who, is, who, who it applied to. Um, if there was a financial aspect to it, a fiscal note was attached. Now, I know that municipal governments don't have to do any of that, but it would be really nice to know what you're talking about when you're doing these things. So I really didn't understand what the garage thing and the cannabis things were all about. So it was nice to get a little bit of an explanation about that. Um, I think that, um, you are doing so many things that I really question whether you're gonna be able to do them all in a very responsible way. 
I, I think it was the last session, there was a discussion about lead in, in water. I looked at the list um, that's posted by the water department and about 50, at least 50 houses, 50 properties in Highland Park have a potential of lead in their water. And they are all over, um, all over the, all over the, um, the municipality. Um, my house was not part of it, but now I'm thinking maybe I should get my water tested because I, I know about Newark and I know about Flint. And it really concerns me that we could have lead in our water and you're not taking it seriously. The other thing is that I reread the RFP for tracks A, C, and D. And you have some typos in there. The most interesting typo in it is that for the uh, the date of the ordinance that you pass the RFP, you have it listed as December 10th, 2022, which is clearly not right. There's also a typo um, in the address for Jim Polos's property for track D. Um, you have the address wrong. Uh, and, you know, I mean, from I spent all of my career doing research. And when I see 30 seconds. Reports, that have typos and, and incorrect things in them. I really question how much other, how many other things are wrong in the report. So I'm gonna be rereading the RFP and uh, looking at it more carefully, but I think you ought to check it to, uh, to see where the typos are. And I, I really think it's interesting that nobody seems to have caught the fact that you have the date for the for the uh, year that you passed the ordinance for the RFP incorrect in that in that RFP. Uh, thank you, Mary. Could I ask? Would you mind emailing uh, me or the mayor or the administrator uh, with with uh, those those typographical errors just for our reference? I I actually requested some new information from Jennifer. Uh, Santiago and I, and in the email um, I gave her the page and the and where it is so Great, I can you. I can forward that email to you if Great, you want thank you yeah next up is Bob Aiello please state your name and address for the record hi my first name is Robert my last name is Aiello are you able to hear me okay yep I live on Cedar Lane and I'm new to the area. Uh, I just listened to some of my neighbors express their views on a particular topic. Uh, frankly, I heard one of my neighbors um, be rather dismissive. I was a little concerned about that. Uh, my question to you is, how will you uh, consider and respond to the concerns that were raised? Uh, there were several points that were made. Some of them were emotional. Some of them were quite factual and specific. Uh, I'd feel a lot better if I knew there was due process and that we considered everybody's opinion in a clear and fair way. Do you understand my question? Uh, yes, Mr. Yellow. And uh, I would have to say that um, uh, we do consider what everyone says. Um, uh, in particular, a number of uh, larger issues such as cannabis have a number of presentations or hearings. Uh, we take all of those into consideration um, uh, and uh, council uh, have the obligation uh, to vote to represent people as well as vote their own judgment. There were a number of specific technical legal issues that were raised. Are those issues represented in the minutes and will they be addressed? Uh, as far as re representation in the minutes, they're represented uh, when discussed. Uh, the borough council, <clears throat> the borough council can also answer legal questions. Uh, uh, it's appropriate for him to answer legal questions. I, I, if they're directed I, I, to. Respectfully, I'm not hearing that you're going to give consideration to what the issues my neighbors raised. I think there are a number of technical points. Uh, I would feel better if we listened to each other respectfully and gave full consideration to the issues raised. It doesn't sound like you're going to do that. Uh, Ms. Aiello, you're referring to comments by your neighbors. Uh, would you like to tell us what comments and technical specs in particular that you're interested in? Uh, there, I didn't take note, but there was a woman who raised specific legal issues in the document and uh, stated that uh, according to federal law that you would be 
in violation of those federal laws. I don't want to quote her directly. Uh, whatever the issues were, I would feel better if I knew that they were vetted and either considered to not be an issue, uh, or if they are, to state how you would address them. And again, I'm not taking one side or the other. I just think it's important for us to respectfully consider each other's views, uh, listen to them, and um, you know, have them properly addressed. Well, as far as the question of whether uh, legalization on the state basis volunteer, uh, violates federal law. That's been the topic of debate since uh, legalization began 10 years ago in the state of Colorado. I believe that the New Jersey legislation actually addresses to some extent the federal requirements. And I know that there are proposals in both houses of Congress to repeal uh, federal legislation criminalizing certain aspects of the cannabis industry and trade. Um, I don't know, Ms. Uh, Council Schneer, if you have more information on the New Jersey uh, statute, uh, which was enacted in its relation to uh, the how they deal with the federal uh, statutes or the regulations that were adopted in, in August. Well, just one final thought. Why not invite those neighbors to express their views in writing? And then in a future session, we can show that we've listened to them and address them in a fair and reasonable way. Well, I appreciate your comments, but uh, again, uh, this is a particular legal question that um, uh, I don't know necessarily uh, in, impacts the action we're, we're taking today. Um, and I believe it was addressed uh, specifically during the uh, discussions that have been taking place over uh, cannabis over the last couple of years. All right, thank you. Uh, looks like Edward, probably the Epsteins are up next. If you wanna state your name and address for the record, please. No, I think we talked already. Um, and your I hands know. up, I call on you. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, cause he was talking about cannabis. I just had a question for Phil George. Um, do you know when they're going to fix Cedar Avenue? Because it's horrendous. And I've had a lot of extensive car bills because of, you know, it's just terrible. That's all I can say. It's just terrible. Are they, is Cedar Avenue scheduled to be repaved at any time in the near future? I, uh, Ms. Epstein, I don't want to talk off the top of my head, but I do have uh, several other streets that I uh, drove around. Uh, during the snow, the bigger snowstorm that we had a couple of weeks ago, uh, where people were asking questions, especially about the impact of the plowing. Um, and I have a list to go over with, uh, with Public Works Committee. All right, well, I'll send you an email. I'll send uh, you yes. an email and you can get That's back okay. to me. I'll, what I'll do is get, send me an email so I have your contact information. I'll ask where Cedar is um, on, on, on the list and I'll uh -huh. get that information to you. Thank you. Um, I wanna to respond to the people in the council who gave me the opportunity to speak on my positions regarding cannabis. And I really appreciate it. And I hope that you take in consideration very carefully some of the things I mentioned this evening, they should be looked into and further researched. Thank you so much. Uh, it looks like Mary Botan is up next. Please state your address and name, sorry, <laughs> for the record. Hi, Mary Botan, 709 Madison. Um, I'm following up on the comments I made in the first public session. And again, any of my neighbors who'd love to knock on my door, feel uh, welcome to do so, 709 Madison Ave. Um, two of the questions I posed during my initial session, you did not answer at all. The first question was, what office or dispatch location for pot are you referring to? Secondly, you want to remove security fencing and gates around the perimeters of any pot businesses. Please explain how removing these items will enhance public safety. Thank you very much. Councilman Hale, do you have information on that? 
Sure, I, 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 I can try. Um, so uh, the, the, the original um, language in the um, uh, in our ordinance um, about fencing was was uh, originally designed um, about um, types of businesses such as wholesale um, uh, and and and, um, uh, and and growing businesses that that we had had thought might be considered. Um, it makes no sense to put a fence around a retail business. Um, and so the, the, the removal of that was an attempt to, to have, if you have a retail business on um, Raritan Avenue, um, it's not practical or reasonable to have a, a fence, like a chain link fence um, surrounding a retail business. Um, those types of fencing um, requirements um, were, were part of, of language that um, uh, was for different types of cannabis uh, 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 um, businesses, wholesale businesses, places where it's growing, um, you know, in, in, in places that, that are not going to happen in Highland Park. And so the, the inclusion of those fences um, didn't make sense for a retail business. They're secure businesses. The state licensing requires um, a great number of security apparatus that's uh, um, um, spelled out um, in their licensing operations. Um, and in our licensing operations. So the, the security is, is um, uh, 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 part of the state application and part of how they go about doing that. Um, the, the, the chain link fences don't make sense on Raritan Avenue. And so we took it out of the legislation. Um, and then in terms of the, the, the dispatch, the, the, the delivery aspect, the, the, the um, a delivery business, um, is a business where um, a, a, a courier will go and pick up um, uh, cannabis and deliver it someplace. That business can be housed in Highland Park, but they can't house um, um, uh, cannabis there. They go pick it up and then they take it to, um, take it to a home. And so the, 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 the dispatch center is um, uh, not a place to store cannabis like a retail facility. The dispatch center that we're talking about is a place um, that would um, uh, imagine a, a place that would call um, uh, call out to, to delivery people who would drive it all over the state. The delivery people go, there's a process again outlined in state regulations by which they pick it up, how they store it, um, the, the requirements um, for um, uh, the, the um, pictures or, or notifications on those delivery businesses are also subscribed by the state. Um, and so um, the, the, that's the dispatch businesses and that's the um, delivery businesses that we're talking about in this particular ordinance, which again are also businesses that could be in Highland Park. Um, it's just that you can't store that on the premises of those. They go pick it up and then they drive it to, um, to, to whoever ordered it. So. Um, so I hope those answered those questions. Uh, Matt, it really doesn't. Um, what you're describing is completely contradictory to what appears in Exhibit A. I'll read it to you. This is what you have written here. With respect to standalone cannabis delivery services, cannabis items shall not be stored or housed at the office or dispatch without trained security personnel guarding the items. That is not what you just described. So you need to change that in the ordinance then to say that these items shall not be stored or housed at the office or dispatch, period. So that's a state licensing regulation and the language of that comes from the delivery language. So that's my understanding. So what you, but, but what you just described is completely contradictory to what you have written in exhibit A. Um, I, I, I think that they're very, the, the point is, is that delivery businesses are not places where we would like to think, have things stored. If then they're stored on a temporary that. basis, they would have to have a armed guard. And that's part of this. If they're stored on a temporary basis in transit, they would have to have an armed guard. That's what I believe that that's about. So, Well, you guys need to look at this because you're waffling back and forth, if I may say. I, I don't think that we are, Mary. I think that we're, well, we, you're, we've pretty you, clear that there are three types of businesses. There's a retail business, a delivery business, and a medical um, dispensary. Those are the three types of businesses um, that we will allow in Highland Park. And those the, the, the prescriptions for those businesses 
um, I, I think are things that will follow the state regulations and follow the state rules about what can be um, allowed at those businesses, how those businesses will be secure um, and, and how they will be run. So you are going back to then the premise as opposed to what you first described that cannabis can be stored at this office or dispatch location for delivery services as long as, as you said, quote, there are armed security personnel guarding the items, even if it's temporary. So that's where you're landing on that. So I, my sense is that the delivery businesses may be a place where things in transit are available. So I think that the reason for having armed security guards there would be in a transit situation. So yes, that is what you're saying. There will be an office or a dispatch location for delivery services for people who wanna get a license and drive pot around to our residents or elsewhere as this allowed by the state, that is correct. However, that whether it's temporary or longer term, there will be armed security personnel at those offices guarding the pot until the driver picks it up. That's what so, you're Terry, saying. Can you, maybe Terry has a clarification. She can be able to get there. The only thing I wanted to say is the ordinance says trained security personnel. It doesn't specify armed and I wouldn't want to put that on the record as such uh, because I don't know that's something that would probably be outlined in the state rules, uh, but that's not specific in our ordinance. Well, that was one of my questions. Would any trained security personnel, who would determine that if they are armed or not? That was one of the questions I asked in session one that was not answered. Right, the state does not specify they have to be armed. Are ours does saying, not either is what I'm trying to, that's the ours only does point not I either. was trying to clarify. It doesn't, say, it doesn't say they have to be armed. Um, who would make the determination if they would be or not? My sense is that that would be a state regulation about what- It is not a state regulation, regulation Matt. Well, then, then it's trained personnel. I think that the trained personnel is the important part. Trained. It's personnel. not. It's not important to those of us who are concerned about whether or not so, it Mary, is up are to you, the. Are you concerned with having an armed guard, or are you concerned that there is not an armed guard? I'm. I'm not sure which. I want to know what you think you are doing. Uh, are are you, you think you are you allowing like or not allowing? Or not an armed guard. That's my question. I'm not sure exactly. I understand. Yeah, I I want. I think you need to be clear, as other folks have mentioned, what you are writing, what you think you are allowing or not allowing. What do you think you are allowing by this? I think we were requesting and requiring that there are trained security guards. I think that <laughs> yes, we know that. That's the specifics. That's as specific as we, so we are going to be. So who, who would make the determination whether or not such trained security personnel are permitted to be armed or not? I think we will follow state regulations on that, is my sense. They do not but, specify, Matt. Okay. Also, can I please address with Phil? Um, Phil, you were a bit off base on your description of federal and state regulations. Um, pot is still completely illegal at the federal level. Even these medical products are not FDA approved. Um, trafficking and controlled substances remains a federal violation. Anything within a thousand feet of a school actually heightens such violations. And I would strongly suggest you get in touch with David Evans, the attorney who was called into this council on numerous occasions to remind you folks of what you're trying to step into. His number is 908-963-0254. And Mary, I don't believe any I'm of you- I'm aware of that. And also the federal policy of non-enforcement as states begin to uh, license that it is not changed. It remains there. Um, there is a lack of enforcement on the federal level where the states are beginning to enact uh, cannabis uh, and the states are trying to address that in both houses of Congress have bills in preparation or introduction in committee uh, with regard to that as well. So that is an item that is, is developing. Uh, and right now Highland Park is following uh, New Jersey state statute and the Cannabis Commission's regulation. You have to acknowledge, Phil, however, that federal law currently exists as I have described and federal law preempts state law. Enforcement or not, that is the law. <clears throat> 
And you also have to acknowledge the rest of it. This is a political as well as a legal issue. It is raised in arguments against cannabis. It is raised uh, frequently uh, in the political arena as well. It has attributes of both. And again, Highland Park will follow the state regulation, being aware of what the federal horizon is with regard to this matter. And, well, that's, and that's the way that it is. Right, just so you know, again, you all need to be aware you are breaking federal law. Thank you very much. I just have uh, Madam Administrator, before we proceed, uh, rather than count the clock, uh, Councilman Hirsch had his hand up. I just had a, I just had a, th thank you, Council President. I just had a suggestion that, um, you know, rather than litigate um, this decision in public, you know, a, a decision that passed uh, a state referendum by 70%, um, as well as 70% of Highland Parkers that supported the legalization of recreational marijuana, uh, cannabis, uh, I would suggest that uh, rather than litigate this in, um, publicly at a you know at a meeting, that uh, you, you can you can also submit your 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 questions to um, to the clerk um, uh, for response from our from our borough attorney. I just I do feel though I kind of see what's going on here. I think, um, and it sounds an awful like what we did when we did our sanctuary city um, uh, uh, resolution a few years ago, where where then we were purportedly breaking federal law by not enforcing Im federal immigration laws uh, locally. And, you know, with the, you know, I think, you know, stigmatizing certain users um, and industry, and as well as kind of threatening the, you know, kind of, kind of um, floating the specter of armed guards in town to protect, to, to, to protect the stash uh, is not what Highland Park is doing to anybody who may be a little more dispassionate about this issue. I will say though that, you know, in, in, in response to Mr. Aiello, we listened very, very carefully to all of the concerns raised by, uh, raised by folks who, who call in, many of whom we agree with on, on, on many other issues uh, and tend to disagree on, 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 on some specific issues. Um, this this issue, um, you know, the the state, Mr. Ayala, you mentioned that you were new to town. The state referendum occurred uh, in November of 2020, uh, and we've had we've had um, uh, public forums uh, as well as uh, and we and we discussed our our our, um, our, our local ordinance uh, uh, way back in, in in August. You know, leading up to that, there was a whole there was a public there was a public process, and I will also note that even before. Um, before the statewide referendum, there was a local effort to preemptively uh, ban recreational marijuana in town. So this issue has been vetted, and I'm sorry that you know it's it's not fair that if you're tuning in um, that you're that 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 you may be seeing a, a, a slice. But there have been uh, many conversations going going back and forth. Um, but I will just say that you know I think we hear the concerns. Uh, we know that this is something that greatly troubles uh, some folks in town, but we also know that there are a lot of folks in town who see this as a real benefit, um, and particularly as a non-threatening benefit that will not only decriminalize an industry that has over-policed you know, black and brown communities for decades and decades and decades, uh, but it also, opens, it also opens the door to um, Highland Park to uh, a new economic um, uh, a stream, uh, and one that you know we we do not feel that we are uh, in a position to shut the door on, uh, particularly when our neighbors, you know, Edison and uh, New Brunswick have 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 done similar measures. So it's um, while your concerns are you know are heard and are and, and and are raised, I would just I would just you know ask if you have very specific legal questions to point them to. Um, our, our clerk and borough attorney. And this issue, Mary, has been litigated, you know, um, you know on the state level. Uh, um, that, that, that was dismissed. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I, and uh, this was um, uh, Judge Jacobson who, um, uh, you know, who dismissed with prejudice and, and you know, a complaint from the cannabis industry victims, uh, educating lit, lit, uh, litigators um, after calling, um, uh, you know, this uh, harmful to the public interest on the uh, you know, on the ballot on the ballot question. So, I think our population is informed. 
Uh, obviously, we're always here to answer more questions, uh, and we hear the concerns, and we hear the and we hear the benefits too. So, just wanted to point that out. Council President, should I resume uh, hand calling? <laughs> uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, looks like Karen Ebel Avery is up again. Uh, hopefully, we can hear you this time. Please state your name and address for the record. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes okay. This thank time you. We can. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for allowing me to um, speak. Uh, my name is Karen Ebel Avery. I live at four zero two Graham Street, um, on the south side. Um, I'm speaking as a mom, as a concerned citizen, and as a pediatrician that works in this community and the surrounding communities. Um, a few points to make. One, I think uh, implication from one of our neighbors is that a lot of us are uh, speaking from a point of paranoia. Um, I don't think that's accurate. And I think that's quite harsh and judgmental for those people who are very invested with years of experience and careers in seeing the harms of marijuana on individuals. Um, I personally support decriminalization. Um, it has disproportionately, as Councilman Hirsch has said, impacted the black and brown communities and it is, uh, should no longer continue in that vein. Uh, but the main question is the um, robustness and speed and the number of pot businesses that we are contemplating allowing in our town. And though our neighbors of Edison and New Brunswick may be capitalizing on this opportunity, they are orders of magnitude larger than our small town of less than two square miles. And I think, again, not paranoia, facts, that the stated economic benefits have not borne out in many other locales that have um, legalized um, to you know, commercial marijuana because of the crime uh, and extra policing that has occurred, A. B, I can't tell you the specific statistic, but um, crime rates, uh, I think particularly in Denver area, uh, have increased because of the various associated, um, you know, I, it's late, I can't find the word that I'm trying to say, but, but associated crime rates. Uh, with increased marijuana use. So the question is, why five and six licenses? Why do we need this many of these types of businesses? Plus the stated tax benefit, I think also has not borne out from material that I have read. So that's my factual statement. My next statement is in the last month, I've seen two children that have come into my office. 30 seconds. Parents smell like marijuana smoke. What am I supposed to do with that? I want people to really understand that yes, people should be able to use this recreationally and medicinally and off-label medicinally. But what if you have multitudes of parents smoking marijuana in their homes and their kids are literally right there? That's important to think about. And if we're inviting five or six pot shops that have um, recreational marijuana available to our community, it's not just the parents who will be using it. Thank you for listening and I appreciate your time. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Dr. Avery. Um, Madam Administrator, do we have more speakers? I do see four hands raised at this point and 18 attendees. Uh, Mary Forsberg is up. Please state your name and address again for the record. Hi, uh, Mary Forsberg again. Um, I have couple kind of different um, issues. One is um, Highland Park's revaluation, which I'm very quite interested in. Um, I note that um, you do not plan to have a final reval done by um, uh, until November 20th, which I think is inappropriate because I believe that revaluations are, revalu revaluating property is, is an art as much as a science. Um, and la the last time we did a revaluation in 1990, there was a lot of, there were a lot of problems with the reval that was done. And I think that this should be done, it should be finished before the election, uh, because I think that you are the people who are responsible for this and you should bear the brunt before the election 
of um, answering the questions about whether this, whether the work was done correctly. Um, I also am sort of interested, I didn't get to listen to the council meeting that was talking about the trees that um, were being purchased and planted. And I was surprised at how expensive the trees are between three and $400. And I would like to see posted on the borough's website where those trees are actually planted because I think it was something like 64 trees. And frankly, I think that there have been a lot of trees that have been purchased, but I don't know where they've been planted. I mean, my husband and I planted our own trees um, in, our, in front of our house. The, the one other thing that I am sort of curious about is that um, I sent a, um, a request for information um, and about the, uh, um, uh, redevelopment uh, stuff. And one of the things that I, was, that I was very interested in, there were a lot of um, emails back and forth that were very, very heavily redacted. One of them was from um, Jim Polos, who you know we all know owns Track D. And it was an email to um, um, Attorney Bauman and it was wondering um, if there was any information on who the master plan, master developer was going to be of the redevelopment. Uh, I'm very curious about, uh, can someone explain- 30 seconds. What, what uh, a master, master developer means and why he would be wondering about that and whether he thought he was going to be the master developer. Thank you. Should I go to the next person, Phil? Uh, yes, uh, unless, uh, Council Schmier, do you have a, a, a comment on that? Uh, Mr. Council President, uh, it was obviously a, an OPA request that was received. Uh, it was reviewed and also discussed with the uh, redevelopment attorney, Joe Bellman, and then the response was given. I honestly don't know what a master developer is because I'm not the attorney for the program. But uh, I'm sure we'll find out. And uh, when we do, we can share that information. Thank you, Council. Council President George, I also want to comment on uh, for, for Mary as well, if I may. Yes, and we'll stop the time clock, uh, Madam. Uh, well, we're not, we're not in the time zone. It's the three minutes per speaker, but now she's okay. speaking soon. <laughs> Um, Ms. Forsberg, first question was in regards to the reval and the date and the timing of it. Um, actually, this reval was ordered by the county tax board and is in preparation for the tax year of 2023. We do not strategically <laughs> uh, picking dates around election, post-election, pre-election. That is not um, our motive here. The motive is to make residents all pay their fair share and um and that's just what we're we're doing here it's been 30 years like you've mentioned and it's it's really time so if you have more questions or want to talk about it more in depth i'll be happy to speak to you you can also reach out to our business administrator or our tax assessor thank you <clears throat> Ms. over do we have any other speakers Yes, we do have three hands raised, 16 attendees. Um, next up is Mary Botian. Oh, wait, she just put her hand down, I think. Sorry. That looks like it just they're jumping around. Am I the only one who saw that happen? <laughs> no, no, they are. They're, they're switching around. I, mean, I swear to you, I, I, they are jumping around. I'm going to select uh, uh, Mary because I called her name, even though she jumped down on the list for some reason. Yeah, I just uh, also want to make sure people are getting a first chance during everybody who's got comment. a hand up has already spoken just okay. for the record. <laughs> oh, thank you, Terry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Matt Hirsch, you had directed a couple of comments to me specifically. So if I may address those. Uh, number one, you know, I agree with Dr. Avery. It's really um, you know, rather disrespectful to presume that uh, we are being paranoid or that we are, have ever made any reference to a stigma of any individual using pot. If you listen very carefully to all of our comments, you read all of our 
emails. There, that has never been the issue of on either of those points. So please do not, you know, uh, put those items into the conversation when we have certainly not introduced them. Uh, secondly, you reference a state lawsuit in which Jacobson um, discharged the case. Uh, please be aware that was simply on timing. There was no issue of not having a lack of standing or not having a lack of um, uh, any other material substance. So please be aware, attorney David Evans with Civil is watching very carefully the timing on what happens in Highland Park. Um, in addition, there's always been several references to the fact that, you know, Highland Park residents voted to legalize. The issue of swamping Highland Park with pot shops, weed labs, delivery services, that was not on the ballot. So Highland Park really needs to move away from that as an excuse for trying to bring in so many pot businesses here. We have been a family friendly town for many years and this really is going to change the character of the town. So again, anybody who has the same concerns that many of us do, please feel free to reach out to me. Mary Botion, 709 Madison. Thank you so much. Council President, may I just respond to, to one thing? Uh, uh, with your permission, Borough Administrator will uh, halt the list for a moment for Councilman Hirsch's comment. I just, no, thank, thank you, Mary, for, for clarifying that. I don't think I use the word paranoid. I would never describe anybody who, ha who takes the time to call in, to write, to express their good faith, you know, um, uh, 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 viewpoint as, as, as being paranoid. So I'll have to go back and look if I said paranoid, I, which I don't believe I did. Um, I will obviously uh, retract that, but I don't believe I labeled anybody as being paranoid. But what I do hear though, is I do hear terms that are used to characterize this policy in a certain way, family friendly. I have a six-year-old, an 11-year-old, and a 13-year-old at home right now. Um, I could be with them, I'm here. Uh, uh, because I feel that the decisions that we are making are there for the safety and safety, the, 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 the safety, the economic justice and the environmental justice uh, uh, well-being of all Highland Parkers. And I think that's why people are here. We are not here to put people in danger. But when I hear arguments framed in terms of, in terms of family friendly, well, what does that mean? Does it mean that there shouldn't be a, a liquor store you know, within, within 500 feet of Irving Primary? Uh, does it mean that, uh, is, does, does family friendly mean that we slow down traffic? Or does family friendly mean that we are using terms to characterize something uh, in a way that you know, makes it seem like people are either at danger or, it, or that it denigrates the character of the community. I don't believe that it does. I believe that uh, you know, many of the concerns that you're raising are, 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 are being put forward in good faith because you believe them and I believe that they should be heard uh, but I certainly wouldn't characterize, uh, you know, anybody calling in as being paranoid. I did use the word stigma because I do feel that there is a stigmatization around the legalization of marijuana that we do need to move away from as a society, as a community, uh, and hopefully, you know, as a state as we move forward. Um, I do believe that marijuana is a, is, 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 you know, I, you know, I won't, I, I, I don't need to speak more on that, but I do, I do just want people to understand how seriously we take all the comments that come in, whether we necessarily agree with them or not, or whether they're reflected in our vote or not, that we take them very, very seriously because our first priority is looking out for the safety, security of our community and making sure that people are living fairly and equitably. Um, and that's, uh, you know, and that's, and, and, and that's really it. So stigmatization, I stand by, paranoid, I don't think I said, thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Ms. Administrator, uh, believe me. Excuse me. I was going to say, um, Tara has her hand raised if you want Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't it. see it. Sorry. <laughs> I, I just want to point out that one of the reasons I voted in favor of this is because I had many, and when I say many, I mean over 100 residents speak to me personally because they didn't want to come to a meeting like this 
and say that they were in favor of it because they didn't want, as Matt said, the stigma of supporting it. And so that my main reason for supporting this was I'll, just as many residents who signed that petition were speaking to me personally saying that they were in favor of this, but due to the stigma around it and them being worried about people not letting other people play with their children and things like that, they did not want to be publicly acknowledging that they wanted this. So I just wanna point out just because people are not on here saying that they're, they want it. There are just as many people who want it, but they're not vocal due to the stigma around it. So I just wanted to point that out to people that we are listening to all residents. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. You're welcome. Good comment. Uh, now, uh, Ms. Obeyer, now we're ready for uh, Daniel Stern Cardinal, who has his hand up. All right, Daniel Stern Cardinal, please state your name and address. Dan Stern Cardinal, 221 Harper Street. Um, I just want to say, uh, similar to what we just heard, that um, I'm a parent of two young children. Uh, they'll be in Highland Park Public Schools. Hopefully, they'll be walking to and from school once they're old enough. I'm perfectly comfortable with them walking past cannabis businesses. I'd much rather have them exposed to legal regulated cannabis than a black market for cannabis. Uh, there are other legal, more dangerous products uh, that they'll already be exposed to in town. There's uh, how many places where you can buy alcohol in town, including one store uh, literally a block from Irving School. Uh, you can get opiates at the, at the pharmacies in town, which are way more dangerous than cannabis. Uh, and then there's tobacco products all over the place, both traditional products and vaping. You can get those in you know, the deli, like they're everywhere. And if kids are walking in and out of these businesses or along the street, they're gonna be exposed to them. Cannabis has been shown to be safer than all of these other things. I would much rather have my kids exposed to legal regulated cannabis than any of this other stuff. So as somebody who appreciates the family friendly nature of Highland Park and has kids that will soon be walking all over town. I am fully in favor of this and see it as a huge net positive for the town. Thank you. Next up is Mary Forsberg. Please state your name and address for the record. Mary, did you wish to speak? No. Nope. Oh. Your hand is up, confusing me. Oh, right. sorry. It's okay. It looks like Bob Aiello. Could you please state your name and address to confirm it's you? Sure. My name is Bob Aiello, and I'm on Cedar Lane. And uh, to uh, uh, the comments from Councilman Hale, I think we had a very good discussion there between you and Mary. Once again, though, I don't feel that it was recorded. I don't feel that we have transparency and resolution. Uh, there was two very specific opinions there, and I, I think that's great. That's the way our discussion should all go. But I think that's a good example of an issue that should be recorded, researched with a, a transparent resolution for all. Uh, to uh, <clears throat> Councilman Hirsch, I may be new to Highland Park. I'm not new to law uh, and due process. And um, I, friend, I listened to your comments about stigmatizing, threatening, use those words. And then I, I had the distinct impression that you were trying to infer, and I'm asking this as a question, I'm not accusing you. Uh, were you trying to infer that someone that opposes cannabis uh, would be a racist? Because I don't think anybody here is expressing things in a racist manner. I think people are concerned. Uh, my neighbor Daniel feels uh, uh, that if we don't allow this, bad other things can happen. He has his opinion. Mary has her opinion. Um, I think as good neighbors, we should be careful to listen to each other, not to infer uh, any negative intentions. I think we all have the right intentions here. Uh, but again, my major concern comes back to the fact that we're not recording the issues as they're being discussed for them to be resolved in a transparent way. Yes, Councilman George. Uh, no, I, 
uh, asking leave of the administrator just to respond when you're finished. Okay, I'm finished. No, I These wasn't. meetings are all recorded and all of them are available uh, on the borough's website to review. Um, so the question of transparency is verbatim the conversations. Actually, it's one of the, I hesitate to call it an advantage of the pandemic, is that since we switched to Zoom, the meetings uh, were always recorded with sound recording, but the uh, uh, the levels were not always that great, especially for comments from the public. Uh, now on Zoom, uh, the recordings are actually high quality and every meeting since um, I think we started in April of 2020 is actually recorded uh, and all the documents are available as well for data mining. So to that extent, the, the, all of the conversations are verbatim recorded and available. I just wanted to make that comment. Great, so let's mine the data. Let's make a list of the issues and be transparent. I, I, I think there's two Mr. sides Ayala, of every story. That's been done and I think it's been uh, recorded and the fact that they're recorded, I don't think we need to go back and, and mine and recap all of the comments that have been made at every meeting. They're there, they're in the public, they're made to the public, but there's an interactive process. And actually it's much more interactive than most municipal governments where the council members respond. And uh, it's one of the advantages of this administration and these council members uh, is that they, they will bring answers and they will respond to questions. And that's uh, not a common practice in, in, in many municipalities. So um, I don't think that they need to be mined and lined up. The comments are there, they're made on the, to on the mo moment, topically and in response to what is on the agenda. The, the discussion between Mary and Councilman Hale raised an issue and we went back and forth. That issue I don't see recorded in anywhere. If it is, could you give me the link? And how will that be resolved? How will that be researched further with a resolution made. Is that with regard to the trained security personnel under Exhibit uh, A, Section Mary 10? raised several issues and there was a respectful discussion with Councilman Hale. All I'm saying is that with issues like this, I think they should be recorded. There should be transparency and we should have a decision so that we all understand the issues and what the resolution is. What I'm concerned about is that it seems to me based upon what I'm hearing, that issues are raised and then forgotten. And that's not the way that we should work together as a community. Thank you. May I, may I just respond to something Mr. Ayala said? Oh, yes, Matt, I'm sorry, yes. Uh, Mr. Ayala, um, I inferred nothing that you didn't hear, um, including paranoia and racism. Uh, Certainly not. So let's let's just you know, let's just move on from 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 that one. But if you do have concerns about how, about my phrasing, I'd be happy to to talk more. I also think that you may have missed the part. Most of my remarks were about hearing the concerns of the residents, listening and talking them out, uh, even if we do disagree, or even if we do disagree about the approach, or why we're moving ahead with this policy or that. Uh, I I. I, I I seem to remember that that was the majority of the remarks that I made. When it comes to um, criminal justice, well, I do believe that the uh, economic um, uh, uh, aspects of, of, of legalization, as well as the criminal justice aspects of legalization are, um, are, are very much connected. Uh, so I don't think that we can look at one necessarily without the other. And that's what I'm trying, and, that, and that's what I was trying to, to, to emphasize there when we look at this as an industry as a whole. But when it comes to just following the guidelines of the Cannabis Regulatory Commission uh, and the state legislation, and that's really what we're going to have to hold uh, our um, uh, our work up against. Uh, and that's and, and that's certainly our burden. And uh, uh, and and I encourage anybody who uh, has those concerns uh, to to email. And to comment at, at public meetings. That was really uh, what I was going for in my, in my comments. Thank you, Mr. Ayala. Um, uh, Ms. Rivera, the next speaker. Uh, yeah, I see. It's uh, 8.50. Um, we have uh, two.
two speakers that haven't been heard yet in the public section, as well as one, uh, Ms. Botian. Uh, but let's see if we can complete by nine o'clock. Okay, uh, Milagros Aguayo, please state your name and address for the record, please. Milagros, you may have to unmute yourself. You have to unmute. Okay, you hear me now? Uh, now we can hear you. Okay, 102 Southern Avenue, Highland Park. Yes, I want to thank Tara Canavaran. Thank you for sharing that you said that many people support you. Uh, also, I heard so many people that sharing with me the opposite, that they don't support these things. Um, I want to share with you all also that they don't support. I don't want to be here right now because they don't have internet, they don't have computer, they don't have a smartphone to share with you what their opinion are. And for other reasons also, they're gonna be here and express the voice of many other people, our neighbors in Highland Park. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Javier, are there any other speakers? Two hands, uh, Abby Stern Cardinal is up next. Hi, this is Abby Stern Cardinal. I live on Harper Street. Um, I just wanted to um, express that I think that this issue has been uh, discussed many times. And I know that a couple of council members have said that, um, you know, it's been discussed and the rec it's on record. So just as a member of the public who attends many meetings, I just want to, um, you know, verify that it has been for the public uh, very uh, open. And I believe that this is one of the issues that has been very transparent. I've in the past been, um, pushing for more transparency. And I have seen an improvement in a lot of areas of that. This is one of those issues that from the very beginning, even before it was um, up for, um, for vote, it had already um, had some public discussion. So I wanted to say, I appreciate that. And um, I, I do think that, you know, it's important for you to hear the public, you know, say that um, what you are saying it, is is accurate uh, for you know uh, um, people who are new to the community, for example. But um, you know, I have pushed pushed on on various issues in the past on transparency. But I I do think that cannabis has been very open, and um, I have heard many many members of the community um, come to these meetings and thank you for moving forward to for um, moving forward and not just. Dan, who shows up at all of them, but many other people as well. Thank you, Abby. Uh, Ms. Rivera, are there any more speakers? Yes, I see one hand. Uh, it's Mary Botan again. Shall I call on her? Yes. Okay. That's 853, so we have time. Okay, go. Mary. Okay. Oh, again. thank you, Phil. Thanks, Phil. Um, I just want to reference, uh, Tara, your comments. That you received, uh, you know, many folks coming to you behind the scenes saying how they were in favor uh, of having commercial pot businesses in Highland Park. Uh, I re believe you referenced quote over a hundred. In fairness, you have to acknowledge as well that over a hundred and fifty names were on the petition. There has also been many folks writing to you on emails per Oprah. Um, so, I mean, literally hundreds of residents coming forward saying no. So even if you have a hundred people saying yes, and you've got a couple hundred people saying no, the point we were trying to make for many months to the council is that when there is such controversy and division and concern, instead of the council jumping in all, all in, two feet in, and actually taking the entire one opposite side, which was those people who you claim are saying yes. No, those of us who have expressed these concerns and said, please even opt out until more information is available, none of our concerns have been addressed in three years of discussing cannabis. Everything, the wave has been always towards bringing it in over and over and over. And you can, I'd like to have you say, where have you ever 
put anything into the ordinance that reflects the concerns we have. The fact that the ordinance even exists doesn't reflect the fact that many folks in town didn't want to go this way. So you did choose sides. I'd also like to reference that, um, yes, the YouTube goes up and has exact verbatim of what occurs. That's great. Most people don't want to spend three to four hours watching the YouTube. So the minutes should be posted promptly and in their entirety. And Highland Park has a very poor record of doing that. Um, right now we have December 7th posted. That's great. Typically we go about four to six months until minutes are posted. I hope that's not gonna be the case for 2022. And lastly, I'd like to read to you- 30 seconds. Um, comments from the planning board acting chair in November. Uh, who says, we need to make sure council is aware of state and federal regulations regarding the ability of laboratories to be in the proximity of schools or other educational uses. Council should be mindful of proximity to residential and medical uses and council should endeavor to, to, be, to do a better job of being open and transparent about issues important to the town and the planning board. I must Thank you. Thank you, Mary. <clears throat> um, Ms. Rivier, I don't see anybody else in the waiting room for participants. It is six minutes to nine. Uh, at this point in time in the agenda, we are at the work session. Uh, we normally will ask for a recess of five minutes. Is there any member of council who wishes to take a five minute recess before the work session? I see only uh, EV uh, electric vehicles on the list from Ms. Rivier as an update. Anyone want to recess? Shall we move through then? Okay, uh, work session, electric vehicles. Uh, Madam Borough Administrator, what do you have for us on this is a Pretty short and sweet, I guess we want to, and Phil, I know you were in our admin meeting, we were talking about this issue. Um, as many of you are aware, uh, the state of New Jersey uh, passed legislation in a, the fall, I think it was in September, establishing a model electric vehicle ordinance. It also governs not just uh, charging stations, but also the provision of infrastructure, both as part of new construction and there's certain thresholds, you know, I think it's five units or more have to pr provide a certain percentage of uh, EV ready spots, et cetera. There, there are aspects of that ordinance where there's absolutely no municipal discretion but there are some standards in that or in the model ordinance where the borough may want to consider establishing uh, standards that we think would work uh, better for Highland Park for one reason or another. So for that section of the ordinance, uh, we've been taking a look uh, at just kind of preliminarily, you know, what our options might be, what what the ordinance covers. So we're trying to get our hands around. And I, when I say we, I want to say the our planner has been working with me on this a little bit. And I know uh, Ed Schmier has been involved in this issue and so have you, Phil. But essentially I wanted uh, the opportunity to let the council but also the public know that we are working on that issue. It doesn't mean that the statewide uh, model ordinance isn't in effect, it is in Highland Park, but we're taking a look at the standards by which we have some discretion if it makes sense to make some Highland Park specific modifications and one of the Kind of key questions we're going to have to grapple with um, are what, if anything, uh, can be done to assist uh, homes in our town in which we have a large number of single family homes that do not have uh, driveways nor do they have dedicated parking spaces. But are there things we can look at in our regulations to uh, address that issue. I mean, there's challenges. It's the, the borough's right of way in most cases, if it's a municipal street, it's a, you know, that section from the street through the sidewalk, but in most cases is borough right of way. Uh, there's public parking usually on those streets unless it's prohibited for some reason or another. So how would you do that? And there's a lot of questions involved. And unfortunately, the guidance and the model ordinance uh, from the state doesn't touch that with the 10-foot pole. So we're, we're trying to figure out what we might do that came up a resident 
asked that question recently, uh, and I just wanted to use the opportunity. The, the since Phil has already been at work on this for some time with Sustainable Highland Park and the Environmental Commission, uh, the mayor recommended it go through the Public Works Committee. So I'll be working with the Public Works Committee on um, some ideas around that. You know, bringing the professional staff together and then uh, talking with that committee about. Uh, where we do or don't end up going uh, in terms of a ordinance for Highland Park. So that's, it was basically to kind of get it up on everybody's radar. Uh, certainly, if you read a good article that you think I should be aware of, I'm in the information absorption mode, and I'd appreciate you forward it to me. I've been reading up on it. Um, but um, other than that, I didn't have anything else to report, uh, Phil, unless you had something to add. Uh, I Just to add briefly in that, um, uh, for the public's information, um, part of the, the, the model ordinance, it's called a model ordinance, but basically it's a state law that's mandatory for all municipalities and counties. Uh, and that relates to uh, permitting charging stations as, an, as an ex, a permitted accessory, and then setting out redevelopment standards. And uh, in our practice where we handle planning boards for a lot of the large cities, uh, that's already in place uh, in developments. And they were required to, um, uh, comply even if their application was pending. I literally had one the day the law became effective. I spoke with Mr. Schmier about that one, the day it became effective uh, and they were required to comply and they were at their planning board hearing. But part of it, the optional sections relate to uh, providing electric vehicle parking spaces in public areas, uh, in municipal space along the streets. Uh, how do you regulate them? Do you put in chargers that are available to the public for a fee? Uh, they left all of those optional. And then the ones, as you said, Terry, that they didn't cover, what about the residential? They basically say it's you, any place is allowed to have a charger uh, as an accessory use, but they don't address the issues of like some of my neighbors on Johnson Street that live on the no parking side and don't have a driveway. Are they? equitably cut off from getting an electric vehicle if they want one. And on Johnson Street, to, to, as the Epsteins know, Johnson Street in that area down Cedar, EVs are prol proliferating because everybody's starting to buy them. And uh, so these are some of the issues that are going to be working with. Also, uh, Councilman Hale is taking that in economic development because the downtown area, um, electric vehicles travel along with some of the other downtown development philosophies and theories like uh, the arts community, uh, they move along to make a thriving downtown. So he's going to be considering that. And fortunately, there's an overlap with him on public work. So, uh, you know, and that's one of the uh, projects that I have in mind for this year is to get that done. But just to let the public know, uh, it's rather a complex question. It does have two parts. It's the commercial downtown public parking uh, and of course, we did a parking study many years ago, but now we're going to have to, you know, roll this into it. And then the residential equity question. And the one thing I want to mention, since it's a general topic, we are going to be, the state recently announced a DEP, a level three, basically the fast charging uh, incentive program, and pse and also has some incentives. So we are going to you know, hopefully get a resolution uh, with your approval, the council that is from me soon to apply for that once we've kind of worked out the detail on location and things like that. So I just wanted to be clear, it's, this is a very supportive and I, I feel there's a lot of support for you. It's very supportive environment. Uh, but we're, we're trying to navigate some of those challenges, but I just, that's something I'm excited about and I hope to be able to report. Which is why we need the plan in place to put nowhere to put the chargers, but absolutely. It's a perfect time to do it, right, Matt? Absolutely. I just, I mean, just to reiterate that 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 I know this council and I know that the you know Main Street Highland Park, the Public Works Department, Phil, me, everyone is is wants to get um, the infrastructure for electric vehicles um, up and running and going as fast as we can and do all we can to sort of. Um, that's an important value, I think, to this council. Um, I know it's an important value to the mayor and um, and and. We, we are working on it. We want this to happen. Um, it is a complicated issue. It's not, uh, it's not a slam dunk issue um, that you can sort of 
plug and play. And so we will be working very hard, but this is certainly something that we, we all think is very, very important. Thank you, Matt. Uh, are there any other items, uh, uh, Terry, on the work session? No, that was the only one. Mr. Schmier, do we have anything for executive session tonight? Mr. President, no. Well, then I think the appropriate motion is one for adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Thank the members of the public who have participated throughout the meeting for the last two hours. We appreciate your input. Council, as always, I appreciate a lively council. You had answers on the tip of your fingers. You had philosophy on the tip of your fingers. Um, that's what a council's about. We're here to lead and we're here to listen. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. All right.